What's going on today, guys? My name is Jay. Today's Welcome to today's episode, which is gonna be Schechter Seven String Shredder Showdown. I can't even say that. I've been trying to say that like 10 times now on camera. Schechter, Schechter, welcome to the Schechter Seven String Show. <laughs> welcome to the Schechter Seven String Shredder Showdown. I said it! What's going on today, guys? Welcome back. Today, we're gonna to take a look at, yes, not one, but two signature Schechter Seven String Shredder guitars. Anyways, you know what it is. You've already seen the thumbnail. So this is gonna be the Dow 7, okay? John Brown's Dow 7 Signature Series versus Keith Merrow's KM7 Mark III Legacy. It's a little confusing with Keith Merrow guitars because he's got several different platforms uh, all within Schechter. He's got a couple different models, but this is the Legacy, and this is by far my favorite of the whole bunch. So real quick, we're gonna go over some sound samples. We're gonna talk about the specs in detail and kind of see, you know, similarities and differences. Let's check them out now. I'll stop rambling. Once again, this is the Schechter Signature 7-String Shredder Showdown. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so first things first. I don't think anyone would dispute the fact that both of these guitars sound incredible, and quite honestly, they both play great too. But as this is a showdown, I kind of have to make a decision one way or the other, kind of have to choose one over the other, and it's really difficult because, honestly, they're just both great guitars, and you can't go wrong with either one. <laughs> Leave a comment down below if you have a choice, a favorite already between these two. Here is what I'm going to use to base my criteria for making that decision. It's going to be things like playability, overall feel, build quality, and of course the sound. We already discussed the sound, they both sound great. That's subjective. I like the way they sound, maybe you don't. But first off, I want to talk about the specs because they are a little bit different. So we're going to kind of compare and contrast the two so you kind of have a more informed decision and kind of know what you're getting into with either one of these instruments. First off, this is the Keith Marrow KM7 Mark III Legacy. Uh, if you go on Schechter's website or any of the retail websites, you'll see multiple different sh uh, signature guitars for Keith Marrow. It's a little confusing, but I happen to like the look of this one the most, so that's the one I selected to kind of check out. So this is the Keith Marrow. We're putting it up against the John Brown Dow 7. I've already reviewed the Dow 6, and I've reviewed this one separately in another video. But here as a comparison, we're just gonna talk about the specs of the two, so here we go. The Keith Merrow has a mahogany body. It's got a three-piece maple neck that you can't really see because it's got the same finish as the body, and it's a neck through construction. This body is not as heavy as you might expect for mahogany because of the fact that it's got an arched top and actually the back is a little bit arched as well. So it kind of gives it that like squashed blade look, it, you know, for lack of a better term. But I think that contributes to the fact that it's a little bit lighter, which it ends up being is about the same weight as the uh, Dow 7 because this is made out of swamp ash, but it's not carved as thin as you can see.
So the Keith Marrow is a 26 and a half inch scale length, which is just a little bit longer than your typical scale length. The Dow 7 is a 27 inch. Uh, and to be honest, it took me a week or two to kind of get used to the 27 inch scale length because that's the first one I've ever played. I'm used to it now. It's not a big difference, but going back and forth between these two, you definitely can feel the differences, especially when you're doing these, you know, stretchier chords like I was during the clean section. Um, it's not too difficult, but it is a little more challenging than normal. If you're not going to tune down too much, you might want to consider a shorter scale length, like a 26 and a half inch like this. It's just a little bit easier if you're you know, a younger person, you have smaller hands, this might be a little more comfortable for you and just easier to play overall. <laughs> So the Dow 7 has the um, Graftech Excel Tusk Nut, and uh, this has the Ernie Ball Compensated Nut, which is really nice. Maybe I can get a good shot of that. The Compensated Nut, I think, helps with the intonation. It's just, um, well, the way it's kind of cut, it just allows the strings to sit for closer or farther away from the fretboard. I don't know, it's hard to explain. You kind of have to see it in person but I think that helps with the intonation overall. Now, both of these guitars are currently in drop A tuning, so the low B string is just tuned down a whole step, everything else is standard, and uh, because this is a shorter scale length, these strings are a little more slack, a little looser than they are in the Dow. You wanna consider which string gauge you're gonna put on them when you get the guitar anyways, it could be completely different. This comes with nine to 46 with a 62 on the B string. The Dow 7 comes with uh, 10 to 56 Ernie Ball, just their straight seven set. I put a 60 on there and uh, it's made a lot of positive uh, difference, <laughs> for lack of a better term. All right, so that's the Keith Marrow. It comes in two colors. This is uh, the dark finish is also kind of a white color. Didn't care for that one too much. Uh, the pickups in here are Lundgren M7s. I wasn't familiar with that brand before, but these sound really nice. And I'll show the waveforms here for some of the sound samples that I did. This guitar overall is a little bit louder, so a little bit higher output and a little more mid-range and just maybe a little less treble, the really high-end treble. Overall, these pickups I found to be really great just to get good tones with very easily. And I would definitely recommend these pickups regardless of which guitar you're looking at or whatever guitar you're gonna choose. These Lundgren M7s, they also make an M6. I would consider that probably for another guitar down the road. This guitar, as far as the um, you know electronics and stuff, it just has a three-way selector, toggle switch, and a volume knob. That's it. There's no push-pull. There's no tone pot. So basically, you know, Keith Merrill wants to just set his tone at the amp, at the source, and just go to town. It's got Schecter's own proprietary locking tuners. They seem to work fine. I've got no issue with them. It's got those nice aluminum kind of circle inlays. Lumen Lay side dots, of course. This thing is a premium quality instrument. It feels great in the hand. It's very comfortable. And this is Schecter's ultra thin C-shaped neck. The Dow is an ultra thin U-shaped neck. They don't feel entirely different in my hand. I can understand though that the Dow has a little more of a flat spot on the back to make it more of a U-shaped. But overall, they feel, they feel very much similar. Uh, the KM7 comes with uh, 24 extra jumbo stainless steel frets. The Dow comes with 24 jumbo stainless steel frets. I didn't really see or feel much of a difference as far as the size goes until I put the two up against each other. And maybe I'll show a picture here up on the screen. That's the only way I could really tell that the size of the frets was different. Apparently these are a little bit wider, I'd say, but they're not higher. So they just didn't feel much different to me. They're both very comfortable. So let's grab the other guitar. All right, I had to turn off the AC and change the battery. So. Completely lost my train of thought. Let's start over. So this is the John Brown Dow 7, which I recently reviewed. I have a video I did on it. I'll leave a link up here if you want to check that out. This guitar is also just a killer of a shred machine. <laughs> Swamp Ash body, and ordinarily with the transparent purple, it's got a flame maple top, but this one here is a gloss finish and it's gorgeous. 
It's got the five piece neck, Paduic and Wenge. And uh, I love a dark neck on a light colored body. I just, that's one of my favorite kind of looks. Uh, both these guitars have some similarities. For instance, the control layout is pretty much the same. They both have the three-way toggle switch. They both have just the volume knob, no tone, but this one does have a push-pull. If you want to get those spanky clean, uh, nice chimey single coil tones, split coil tones. These pickups here are John Brown's signature set through Schecter. It's the Colossus and the Chaos Breaker. Uh, both guitars have a hip shot bridge. They both have stainless steel frets, but like I mentioned, these frets are jumbo stainless steel. The other ones are extra jumbo. I didn't notice a difference at all. They both have ebony fingerboards. This one has no front inlays. They both have the aluminum lace side dots. And this has the nicer, in my opinion, tuners. It's got those hip shot open gear tuners the grip locks, which I just like them because they look really go cool and uh, they work fine. They work awesome. So as far as build quality goes, I would kind of give both these guitars a tie. I think they're made in the exact same factory in South Korea and they just kind of feel equally well made, basically. There's, you know, and as far as the fit and finish, I didn't find any kind of blemishes or real mistakes other than this nut, which I mentioned in my other video that needs replacing. It was just cut poorly, but everything else on this guitar is just 10 out of 10. Same thing can be said for the Keith Merrill. Now these guitars do cost, what, three or $400 difference, I forget the exact amount, but uh, this one's a little bit cheaper, so you know if that's a consideration for you out there, you might just wanna go with this one. But the John Brown is, like I said, 27 inches long, the Keith Merrill is 26 and a half. That half inch difference might not seem like a lot, you know, a lot to some people, but honestly, it feels pretty significant when you're going back and forth between the two guitars. Once you get acclimated to playing this for a few days or a week or two, you know, you're used to the larger stretches because the frets are, you know, relatively more spaced apart. Uh, with the Keith Marrow, that's a little bit more similar to a Fender scale length, so it just feels a little more natural to me. So like I said, playing the sound samples, going back and forth between the two guitars, I did find myself kind of messing up a little bit here and there because, you know, you're stretching more for this one, less for the other one, not a big deal. But just want to keep you guys informed out there, you know, if that's a consideration for you. If you're not going to down tune very much, you might want to go with a shorter scale length. The neck on this one is, like I said, it's the ultra thin U shape. The Keith Merrill is an ultra thin C shape, but honestly, they don't feel a lot different in my hand. This one might have a little bit more of a flat spot on the back in the middle of the neck. It's not really that pronounced, so they honestly just feel very much similar. Uh, this one is very comfortable. You do feel it in the forearm a little more, this edge, and it, the Keith Merrill just seems a little softer. I think it has more of that kind of nice arch top curve under your forearm, so maybe that's a little more comfortable. Again, not a big deal, but I'm just letting you guys know all of the differences so that you understand, you know, if you're looking at these two guitars and you really can't decide which one you'd rather get and you're only gonna get one, all these little things matter. So, I mean, obviously looks matters, cost matters too, but in the end, you wanna be able to play something that's comfortable, that inspires you, and that just sounds good. Next up, let's talk about the sound. Uh, these, these pickups here on the Dow are a little less output, a little more clear, a little more, yes, the word articulate. Uh, you do hear the clarity of the notes in chords, even with distortion, a little bit better, I would say, than the Keith Marrow. But again, both of these pickup sets sound great, and I had no real issues with either one of them. If you are, you know, real nitpicky about pickups and that, that's kind of your thing, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this one is, this one's clearer. It has a little less mid-range. This one is more mid-range focused and a little more output. So if you just want the heavier gain tones, maybe you wanna go with the Keith Merrill. So far we talked about build quality, we talked about overall feel in the hand, the sound, you know, playability. I mean, that's kind of a subjective thing too. It's just, which one can you maneuver around on the guitar easier? Is it, which one is easier to, you know, actuate the controls while you're playing? In this case, they're both the same. Um, this guitar for me is a little more difficult to play only because I like to do some of these extended range chords. It's just a little bit more of a stretch for me. I don't have the biggest hands. So it takes a little more concentration and a little more effort to kind of get some of those bigger chords that I want to reach for. Having said that though, again, you'll get acclimated to this guitar after a couple of days. So if you're playing that kind of stuff, you will get used to it pretty quickly. I don't, you know, I don't think it's a huge learning curve for anybody. If I can do it, this is the first time I've ever had a 27 inch scale length guitar in my hands in my entire life. And over the past couple of weeks, I've just gotten very used to it. It's comfortable. But if I had to choose one over the other, 
as far as playability goes, I'm probably gonna go with the Keith Merrill just because it has that shorter scale length. Again, this is 26 and a half inches, so it's a little bit shorter, just a little more familiar to me overall. Um, and this body finish is nice and smooth and comfortable. Of course, having a satin finish like this, you know you're gonna kinda get those wear spots over time where it kinda shines up from where your hand or your fingers rub frequently. So that will probably occur, I'm sure, over time. It's not a big deal for me, but maybe that annoys you, you know? I mean, you will see the little glowing shine spots on the guitar when you're playing it, when you're live on stage, what have you. As far as playing live too, let me mention that. Uh, this guitar just feels more comfortable against the body, under the forearm, that kind of thing. So, I mean, if you're gonna be playing a set or you're playing for a couple hours every night, this is probably a little more comfortable. So in the end, I mean, it, honestly, it's all subjective. All the stuff I'm talking about is kind of things that I like or don't like. And um, overall, it's hard to say. If I had to choose one of these guitars, oh, it's a tough choice, but I don't know. I think I would go with the Keith Merrow. It looks cool. It's a little more expensive, it, but it's got things that I like. It's got that slightly shorter scale length. It has this nice Ernie Ball compensated nut, which really does help with the intonation. It's got the extra jumbo stainless steel frets. It has the front inlays, which while I don't really care to look at those inlays, it does help me a little bit to guide me around when I'm kind of trying to do my shred thing and move around the neck pretty quickly. And it helps a little bit for me to not just have the side dots, but also something on the fretboard. I do like to kind of have that to help me maneuver when I'm going around pretty quickly. These pickups sound really good. And being that they're kind of mid forward and EQ frequencies, I think this one's gonna be a little easier to dial in into the mix with a band. It's just, you're gonna get a, a quicker modern metal tone with this one as opposed to the other one. Um, that's just my opinion. But yeah, if I had to pick one over the other, I'm gonna go with the Keith Merrill KM7 Mark III as my final choice, final answer. But again, leave your comments down below and let me know which one you guys prefer. I'm kind of interested to see what people think because both of these, at the end of the day, are high-end, high-spec, great built guitars from the same company, both Schecters. They both sound awesome. They're both a ton of fun to play, and either one is gonna put a big smile on your face. I guarantee that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm out of here. See ya! Today, we're gonna try to say this sentence. Schrechter's signature seven-string shredder showdown. Ah, I can't say it.